Okay, here we go. Here we go. We're ringing. Episode 12, right? Yeah. Okay. Whew. Got that one out of the way. <laughs> Hello, Mark speaking. Hey, Mark, it's Claudio and Matt LaHood here from The Mentors and our all third mentor, Clinton, joining us here this morning. How are you, Mark? Good, good, guys. Wait for the call. How are you? Good, good, good. good. So we've decided to uh, remain this uh, anonymous. So, Mark, just tell us a little bit, um, maybe a little bit quickly about your career in real estate. How long you've been in, in your real estate? We do know uh, that you're from Melbourne, right? You're selling Melbourne? I'm in Melbourne, um, been in it for five years now. Yep. Um, working, so obviously Melbourne's been been going through a um, you know, bit of a boom cycle these last five years. However, my marketplace isn't in that um, in that cycle. So I'm, I've been having hard conversations with vendors for the last five years. Right. Okay. So your market has been a lot different compared to other markets. So Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, call it where you want. The last five years, we've been going through a bit of a boom town, right? But you're Correct. saying your part of Melbourne hasn't, is that right? So, That's right. So is that because done. there's a lot of new development where you are or what, what's a the A lot story? of development, a lot of supply, uh, people yep. buying at developers' prices. So um, capital growth is non-existent, so they've got negative growth. Okay. You don't have to give us the suburb of Melbourne, but is it uh, what, what part of Melbourne? Is it uh, outskirts uh, of Melbourne? Is oh, it? no, so in a city, so within, within anywhere within 5K is the city. Okay, so you it's almost like a Piermont in Sydney, okay. in that, Darling Harbour, like what in that area. Days on yep. market, Mark, for you, what are they? Uh, <laughs> mate, when I first started, they were up at about 130. So um, average days on market in my marketplace at the moment sitting at about uh, 95. At okay. the moment, our office is sitting at about 60. Okay, and um, do you do auctions or mainly for sale? Um, I do do auctions. Um, majority of the properties are private sale. Um, I'm I'm very selective with which properties go to auction because the my experience is the process doesn't work for all of them. Not for all your What's properties. a clearance rate out of your office? Uh, clearance rate, I would have to say we're probably looking at about fifty percent. Okay. Fifty fifty. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. So, um, have you got a question for us today? Or a scenario? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so obviously, I'm, I'm used to having those um, hard conversations with, with vendors, and I've got a a property that I won, out of so I'm an out of area agent. Um, as we all know, the process doesn't change, and so I've um, got a property on the market in in a marketplace that did experience uh, all the growth and, and activity that Melbourne's experienced. So this is a property that's actually outside of your core market at the moment? Correct. Okay, yep, go on. So still an inner city suburb, but one that you know, has, has had a you know, flourishing few years. Yep. Um, now, that property there, I said, you know, so um, went in against a few other agents, um, you know, used, used comparables, you know, put together a pretty, pretty realistic analysis for the owner. Um, the, the months leading up to them deciding to sell, they had a lot of the local agents really pumping their tyres, telling them that they're going to get in, in excess of two milk. <laughs> that happens yep. in this market, yep. Which is great. They understood that, you know, something that agents do. But now, two weeks into the campaign, they're not getting the feedback that they want. We've got an auction on it. Um, when's, so, your auction? when's your auction happening? Uh, the following weekend. So, so we've got... yeah, so we've got Two more weekends. Up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go on. So we're going to yeah. to make some yeah. things happen. How yeah. many buyers um, have you had through it so far? Uh, we've had 22. And any offers? Weeks. No offers. Um, three requests for the contract. Once the contract came in, that died down to one request. So obviously I've, I've had that, that hard conversation with the owner uh, pretty early on because I've got no key indicators that we've got people that, that are going to be at the auction. No one's asked me about offers prior. The people that have asked for the contracts, they've now uh, all but vanished. When you're doing the callbacks, what's the feedback? Uh, to be honest, most of the feedbacks are either from people that have just entered the market, so they don't feel qualified enough for any feedback. The ones that have been in the market looking, the property doesn't suit them. Mm -hmm. And the feedback is, I would say, what would be about 15, 20% lower than where the owner wants to be. 
Would wow. you have a buyer of 15, 20% lower now today if you had to? No, no, no. Well, that's it. The feedback's been from people that actually don't want the property. Right. So they're usually the best people to give you feedback because exactly. they can't see value in it that's for some right. reason. And there's no emotional connection to it. When you say yeah. the other percentage it didn't suit them, why didn't it suit them? Is there uh, obviously look, Claudia and I don't know the property. Is there? Yeah, so is it, it unique? Is um, there some problem it, look, with it, the layout or something? Un- it is unique, but the challenge is it's four levels. So right, okay. you downsize the market, they're wiping it out because chances are it won't be the last place they buy because their knees are going to give way. Yep. yep. So, uh, so we're losing the downside of the market. Um, you won't get the young families either. Well, you won't get the yeah, exactly right because um, you know, uh, so unless your your kids are in their you know pre-teens, uh, early teens, someone to help with the groceries to get them all the way up. No so, gonna... Mark, let me ask you this: If you read the ad, does it does it target that market you're trying to reach? It does. Uh, we're targeting. It's all about lifestyle. And but if um, I was to read the ad, if I was a teenage family, would it stand out that that's what it would suit? If I read it right um, now. Good question. I'd have to go over the ad and mm. um, confirm that. But we did emphasise on lifestyle. There's uh, there's the hot spot because you're getting the wrong buyers through, right? So when you yep. when you when you market something particular like that, have you had any editorial like on it online or in the local paper or anything? Yeah. Um, we we looked into it. So now at the moment, the um, the owners are starting to slam the marketing. So now yeah. the blame is they, thrown. Well, but blaming on you, blaming the marketing is is that what's happening? <laughs> well, correct. Yeah, it could be a good wake up call to reinvent what you got quickly because online you yep. can change it in you know fifteen minutes. Um, you can reboost it, go back to the database that you've already had. I'd go back to the twenty buyers that you've been through and just check them out again and say, hey, listen, just wanted to check. But I think you've got the wrong buyers coming through it from what I can see. I, I agree. So the the buyers that we're getting through, and, and this is a challenge, so um, obviously all the all the regulations that changed in Victoria with with the way we quote prices, uh, also experience that we're, we're getting a lot of confused buyers. Um, some agencies are still still quoting well below the value and the expected range. Um, some are keeping within the regulations. So buyers are still coming through automatically tacking on their, their 10, 20%. So um, the buyers that we're getting through are estimated that the properties can go for for two, maybe a bit above two, and they're prepared to spend that. Yeah. But it doesn't compare with the properties that are actually worth that value. And where are your vendors at? Vendors are within the range. So... So we're not quoting outside of the range or anything okay. like that. Let me let me grow granular, Mark. If you had an offer on a contract this afternoon at one point nine twenty five, would they take it? Sorry, what was that? If you had an offer on a contract signed with a check attached to it today at one million nine twenty five, what would the vendor do? They would be signing the other the other section of that contract. So they'd be selling it, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, certainly. Well, you need to be pitching it where they are because it sounds like you're pitching it like too far above where they are. Well, you, if, if they'll take one nine, then you're... You, what, are, well, what are you pitching at the moment? What, 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 when you said to us it's yeah, around what, what, two... What, what, your, what are you pitching it at the moment? What's uh, your One eight to one nine. One point eight to one point nine. But your fear is buyers are coming through, <laughs> adding the 20 to 30% on top of that. So they're thinking it's worth more than two million. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. Everyone's adding adding $200,000 to that tag. Right. Okay. So your vendors are at one eight to one nine. Okay. You're quoting that. But then buyers are actually just what they're thinking probably because they've been thinking probably like last year, Matty, thinking it's going to go for 20, you know, 10 or 20% yep. more. So they automatically think this is a $2 million property, yep. but it's not. So your question, what do you want to know, Michael? Is it, is it your Well, market? I mean, look, at, at the end of the day, if, if the owners would consider offers below the range that, that we've got, that would be ideal to market at that range. But um, so the feedback we've had has actually been around 1.6. That, and that's consistent feedback. At 1.6? Correct. Right. Okay. Okay. So the, the feedback's at 1.6. What do you reckon, Matty? So Vendor's at 1819. He's quoting 1819. Yep. Feedback's more like the 1.6 because yep. the market's coming back, as you know. We all know the market's mm. changed a lot. Um, and your, are your vendors prepared to meet the market? No. No, that's it. And they're expecting... Uh, 
their expectation is that the agent is to sell the property to the buyers coming through the door, which I completely and utterly agree. But you actually need interest to be able to sell it. Right. Otherwise, you can, otherwise, the only time people are, are going to be interested in the property is if it's below market value. It's a it, pure opportunity. Here's what I would do, mate. If it was my property, here's what I'd do. I'd go and sit with the vendors and say, look, we've got no interest in it. The reality is yep. I would extend the auction another two weeks. I'd push. I'd change the auction date and push it out another two weeks. I'd completely yep. reinvent the marketing. Correct. You, you need to go there with a strategy, Mark, because if you sit there and you're just going to get shot and they'll lose a listing in three weeks. That's right. But I'd go there with a proper strategy. I'd say, here's what I want to do. I'm going to reinvent the – I'm going to redo the ad completely. I'm going to target the teenage market. I'm going to adjust the price guide. And I think you've got to get a price guide of 1.7 to 1.8 on it. Correct, yeah. Right? Um, realistically, and get them to agree that that's where it is. Push the auction down two weeks. Push the auction out another two weeks. I'd redo the marketing. I'd resend out to the database. I'd ring the 20 people I've got and say, hey, guys, great news. You adjust the price, guys, 1.7 to 1.8. Yep. And I would say to the vendors, look, if we don't do this now, we're going to be sitting there, the three of us, at the auction on auction day. Twiddling our thumbs. That's what I would do. Yeah. Yep. And that will get the result, in my view. Correct. And, and I think having that clear strategy and that guidance, they'll understand where you want to come from. But also, but also I want to bring Clinton in. Clinton, for someone like Mark right now, yep. um, and obviously, you know, you being the social media expert here, anything you could suggest here around what he could do? Exactly what, what Matt said. He said maybe he needs to target families with teenage kids, um, you know, redo the, the advertising. But anything from a social media platform that um, Mark can be doing? Absolutely. So, um, quick question for you, mate. With the marketing that you have done, where have you marketed the property? So, uh, outside of your traditional online uh, avenues, we, we're, we're a big supporter of social media. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I actually sat down with the owner uh, two days ago and we were looking at, you know, they wanted to, to publish in the weekly review. They wanted to do a quarter page ad. Yep. And, and you know, they asked, they, they asked me for my advice as to whether or not you know, that's going to be a good investment. So I said to them, you know, for, for one week in the weekly review on a quarter page ad, you're probably better off putting that money into social media instead mm-hmm. and uh, doing a targeted audience campaign. Exactly. So we've already, we already do that, not, um, but. So where, yeah. where, like where have you guys advertised? Uh, so we, we pick the, so we pick that suburb and surrounding suburbs also yep. where some of the buyers the buyers that are coming from yep. that that have come through the property, targeting those suburbs as well, mm-hmm. um, and and then picking the specific um, uh, what's the word on the buyer behaviours, the um, uh, interest. Yeah, yeah the so interest. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Yep. So I would I would I'd actually go back and look at that ad. And um, did you guys try doing a lead ad? Through Facebook, Sorry. I'm assuming we're talking about Facebook. Uh, Facebook yeah, in terms of where you have it. To, okay, cool. So, um, if you haven't done it already, you can actually go back and you can do a lead advert, which will actually collect data from the people that see that ad. I would run two different ads. I'd run. Have you, did you do a video for the property or not? We did, and it's the video that we're pushing. Fantastic. You also need to grab the photos, yep. and you need to push photos as well because you're going to find if you A B test those. Um, yep. In many instances, when it comes to the advertising part of it, especially with a lead ad, you'll probably see a higher cut through of people showing interest just off one good photo from the property. Yep. But what you need to do is you run multiple ads using using the budget and and try to push to get at least five hundred to a thousand if you can, and um, pump it for a week or two, and make sure that when you go back in there that you're getting people that have. Um, uh, teenagers um, as part of the demographic because now that we've changed that that's what it needs to be I go a little bit deeper in terms of some of the the copy um, talking about uh, the features and the selling points of the property which will speak to that market Mm -hmm. and then I would run simultaneously video and a couple of uh, a couple of different photos and see which one gets you the best result that's a great idea you need to go back into that at least a couple of days into the campaign and see which ad is getting the better result Mm -hmm. and put more money into that ad Yep, okay. So then review it and then boost the one that's performing the best. Exactly, but run lead ads. So do lead ads. What's lead ads? Because I don't... I'm, okay, I'm, I'm so, so for anybody ad? that doesn't know what a lead ad is, when you jump into Facebook, there's different types of campaigns you can run. You can run an awareness campaign. Yep. Uh, you can run clicks through to a website. Yep. You can run lead ads. Yeah. Now, a lead ad is essentially 
Um, Matt, uh, the potential buyer, sees the ad, likes yep. what he's looking at, submits his details, which Facebook already has. Mm, so yeah. you're not having to punch that stuff in. It automatically comes into the ad. Yep. Um, and you can specify, be, be simple with it, don't go too deep. Yep. Um, but you know, name, telephone number, or name, telephone number, and email address is enough. Yes. And give them something of value that you, you're, you're offering them. You know, be that, um, you know, more information about the property or, um, uh, you know, exclusive, uh, you know, opportunity to go through and visit, like view the property one to one or whatever it may be. Um, in terms of what you think the market's going to appreciate. And then as they start to, to submit the details, you can then pull that data out and either sync it with your CRM or just have an Excel spreadsheet wow. of the names. That. That's really numbers. good. What, what a yeah. great way to get yeah. data. Emails. Yeah. It's brilliant. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's really, really good. Um, aside from that, though, you might also want to consider looking at LinkedIn and Instagram to push some awareness on this property as well. So yeah. as you're on all three platforms with, as well. With yeah. LinkedIn, mm-hmm. I mean, aside from, like, posting onto your page, the owners have posted it onto theirs. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll post it onto the office page. Is there a way to boost through LinkedIn? LinkedIn is not uh, really a realm outside of just generic. You, you, uh, you can get you post. can get more awareness by by spending money on it. Absolutely, I would okay. if I was you. Um, if you're not familiar with it, is I would find somebody quick smart that is a specialist in those areas um, that yeah. will be able to help you get the most out of that dollar. Because then you've also got a case study. If, if you are successful with advertising this property and you've now got the data to prove that, hey, spending 500 or 1,000 gets X amount of leads and this amount of awareness and eyeballs on your ad, then you've got a precedent moving forward to do it for every single property that you're trying what, to sell. What a great case study or listing tool to have exactly. as well. Yeah. That's exactly. brilliant, brilliant, Clint. Yeah. Okay. Mark, there's two other things in closing I, I just wanted to mention to you. One, have you reached out to buyers advocates? Uh, I've reached out to buyers advocates. I've uh, have you had them done, through the property? They're they're not coming through because I've sent through all the information. They just don't have any buyers on their books that that it suits. Right, and you've reached out to all of them, all of the key ones. Um, I'll reach out to some more. So yeah. that's already out of out of a few. So I think you need to numbers. reach out to the key ones. The second thing is in in the area. Do you have any friendly agents that you work with that? Um, might be under the same brand you're under or just other agents that because it's not in your no. core market no and the challenge is I've got the so the owners are as I said they're they're, they're losing faith they're, you know I've got to be honest with them yep. they're losing faith in me yep. because because of what's going on and they're they're questioning having an out of area agent um, mm. so what, that's what why happens, it could be smart for you to jump on with yeah. someone before you lose a whole lot and say, so that's yeah. why I'm saying, if you had a friendly in the yeah, area, well, I probably left should that, have brought him in in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Look, I left the door open. So the owner did actually introduce me to a couple of agents that I was speaking to, and I left the door open. And um, the feedback from, I said to them, I'm open to collaboration, working together. Um, uh, but just their impression was, well, now it's marketed, there's nothing much we can do. So if it was off-market scenario, they are all for it. Yep. Um, yeah, and I'll reach out to them again. Um, happy to reach out to them again. They yep. said my goal is to get a result for the owner. Yeah, yeah. Because sounds, I know what will happen yeah. if, if it doesn't happen. They'll will go through the experience yeah. twice, uh, and chances are it'll sell for below what they're probably able to achieve. Exactly. That's why you need to reinvent it today. You need to get in front yep. of the owners today. Reinvent the whole thing, the marketing. Exactly what Clinton said. Push market yep. it out there. Lead ads, the whole yep. thing, and show that you're doing something proactive. I think that's what's yep. going to be key is show empathy. Show that you're proactive with the, the situation right now and, and, and what your strategy is. And I think, you know, between what Clinton said, Matt said, and, and I said here, uh, Mark, is you going in front of them and showing them a clear path of how we're going to get a result and an outcome and get top dollar for your home, whatever that's going to look like, but get top yep. dollar. You may want to reboost it on the internet as well. Well, that's... that's, yeah, that's well, um, well, up. We'll, we'll, fall, we'll fall in line with the... If we push it out two weeks, we'll still fall within the... The 45-day cycle of realestate.com. Yeah, I'd push it out two weeks. That gives you time to yeah, reinvent yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Get um, more buyers advocates I, I, in. I would. Quick, that's, that's quick a question on that, though. Like, if you've advertised it, I'm assuming, a week or two ago, is that how long? Uh, and, and I'm talking about the listed websites, domain and real estate. Um, sorry, sorry, is that uh, to me? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yep. So how long ago did you list it on those sites? Uh, what's it been on now for... We're coming on to 20 days now, so three weeks. Okay, cool. Has it dropped down the list? Or is it, it features? Has, what but I mean, every, 15, every 15, mm. oh no, we went to premiere, so um, okay. so every 15 days it's back up at the top. Uh, good thing is 
you know, the there's not a whole lot comparable in the marketplace. Okay. This is like a unique property. All right. it, it's a unique property, but even just the, the features, number of bedrooms, number yeah. of car parks. And and, like. and, and, and and you know what you also could say, just as a bit of dialogue to your vendor as well, because even though you're going with the strategy of being proactive, I would just say to them, it's a unique property, right? And sometimes unique properties take a little bit more longer to find the right buyer for your home. So like you, you bought this home, there'll be another buyer that will appreciate and love the home like you do, but it might just take a little bit longer than usual because it is unique. Okay, so I think once they understand that, it's not like your stock standard, you know, three bedroom semi terrace, for example, in the inner city. It's a different type of home that you have, right? Correct. Correct. So, yeah. Clinton? If you don't mind me asking too, mate, what, what do the owners of this particular property love about it? Why did they choose that property in the first place? What do they enjoy about it in the years that they were there? Uh, oh, it's got some unique aspects. If I, if I, if I delve into them, it'll be pretty easy to pinpoint them out in the marketplace. So mm. they did go into it, and I understand their emotional attachment. They spoke to me about the day that they bought it, mm. um, how they felt when they bought it. Uh, so, look, I do understand their attachment to it and, and why they love it so much, and I'm trying to recreate that. The other challenge I have is when I've got buyers coming through the door, the first question they ask me is it currently tenanted? And when I tell them that it's owner-occupied, they're kind of shocked with the presentation. Well, that could be another part. That might it is another part. It's, it's one that I've touched on a couple of times. Mm. Um, and uh, I've spoken to them about partially staging. There's bits of furniture that at the start of the campaign I recommended getting removed. Um, and everything kind of just got thrown into the too hard basket. I think, Mark, um, you've got to go down and have a long meeting with these people and go through everything step by step because um, yep. that's the only way you're going to fix it, yeah. And, um, yep. you know, just be transparent. And sometimes, like you know, not every listing's a good listing either. Um, and sometimes um, you can get it wrong. If you put your hand up and say <coughs> you got it wrong, I think that's a good yep. thing. Um, out of my 30 years of selling real estate and over 2,500 properties, I've got it wrong plenty of times, but I've owned up at the front end and I've rebuilt my relationship at the back end and come out smelling roses at the end. If you don't rip yep. the Band-Aid off now, you're going to lose the business and, and it'll exactly what will happen. Yeah. 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 They're, and they're, they're interpreting my, uh, my feedback as me losing faith in, in the property. Um, well, that can happen, yeah. So yeah. I, I think you've got to be strong. You've got to be go in there with a strategy, feel confident about your strategy and what you're going to deliver yeah. because that's what, that, yeah, and then work out ways how you can recreate that buyer excitement and what your plan is to re-energise that listing. And I think if you've got with some key points we discussed today here, Mark, I think for a lot of them, they'll find refine that confidence in you. But if you keep doing and you're capping out with not getting the same result, it's like yeah. they're going to be going, we're just going down the same, nothing's changing. Yeah, if nothing changes. But even if you changes. change the ad, like saying, this is what we're going to do, talk to me more about what, why you guys bought this property. I want to put that into the ad a little bit more because then they'll get that engagement. That, that again shows empathy and that also shows that you're listening to them as well. Yeah, if they see you getting the buyer's advocates in and reshuffling, getting some co-agents in, getting some, and when the buyer's agents proactive. and people like that come in, I would get them to tell you what they think it's worth because yep. that's not you saying what it's worth. That's independent third the buyer, party. The buyer yep. agent and well, the buyer yep. advocate, etc. All right. Okay, yep. Mark, thank you so much for joining us here at the episode of number... 12. 12. 12 here on The Mentors. <laughs> Good thing, Mark, ring, uh, keep Claudio updated. So yeah, keep we, we love up. hearing yeah, stuff. Like, so keep us updated how it goes. And maybe yeah. one of our future episodes, we'll give the guys, see how it uh, ended up going. All right? Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate it, guys. Really love the idea of uh, restructuring the ad and, and bringing things back to life and, and pushing the auction back. Two uh, weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Beautiful. Love it. Thanks, awesome. Mark, for joining Thanks us here on time. today's episode of The Mentors. See ya. Thanks, mate. Thanks, guys. Chat soon. Got something great from this episode? It would mean the world to us if you passed it on. Tune in each week as we mentor a new agent. Have a question? Want to be on the show? Get in touch with Claudio Encina, Matt LaHood, or visit our Facebook page. The Mentors is brought to you by Sprinkler.media.